tripod here. Sit up right. There we go. Come here a minute. Oh, yeah. In case anybody's wondering, Mama Cat's in the house today. That's about all she wants of that. All right. Well, I just closed up my browser. That was good. Let's pull it back up here. Close that. All right. Everybody's coming in there now. Okay, let me see here. Give everybody a few minutes to log on. Post, published, and view. All right, okay, All right, everybody, there they are. Nice shirt. Uh, this shirt was made by John Davis down in Nashville. He's the uh, lead singer of the Leaves of Memory. That They're kind of a rock band. I use their music a lot in the videos. Not so much anymore. I used to use them a whole lot, though. But, uh. I use them a lot back in the past, but he makes these tie-dyed shirts down there. Love them. Bruno, you want to come say hello to everybody? Special appearance by Bruno coming up. Boo surprise! <laughs> come over and see you. Now say it. Look, bend down. Hello. <laughs> hmm. Denver, no sawdust. Sorry. Sorry I ruined your day. Uh, let me see here. Good morning from Maine. Just kidding. All us too. Uh, let me see here. Uh, hey to Bruno. I'm trying to catch up here with everybody. I got some moderators going. My wife is at work and she's moderating from there. And uh, my buddy James up in Ohio, well, if he's online today, he's also moderating for us as well. So hopefully we'll keep all the uh, profanity and the political stuff and everything out of the video today. So uh, let's get started here. Where's the cat? If you Well, you missed her. She was here when I started the video. She's in the house. I think Bruno just carried her to the bedroom. She's an in and outdoor cat anymore. We let her in at night and she sleeps usually on top of this large... Uh, dress her in the living room, then we put her, well, there she goes. And then we put her in the garage at night, usually after that, when she starts wandering around the house. But uh, she's in the house right now. She's in there in the kitchen, it looks like, and her laying on the floor. She'll be in here in a minute. She usually wanders around pretty good. Okay. There's off grid with Doug and Stacy. Hope you guys are doing okay up there. I was actually hoping to get up there to their location and check out their sawmill, but this travel stuff going on. I doubt that's going to happen anytime soon, but I wish that could have happened. That would have been nice. Okay. Uh, let me see here from Nebraska. People all over the world watching here. Howdy from the grass plant. <laughs> Howdy from the glass plant. Huh. I wonder if that's the AFG glass plant down here in uh, Hawkins County. It's interesting. Probably is if that's what he's talking about. Hello from Western Maryland. Hello from, uh, yes sir, there's Tim from the glass plant. My uh, uncle, Johnny Elliott, he actually retired from the glass plant years ago. He worked there forever. If you've been there for a decent amount of time, you might've remembered him. He retired in the 90s, I think. And uh, another good buddy of mine named uh, Goatman, good bodybuilder guy, worked down there as well. I just lost my screen again. Having internet problems today, guys. That's why I was delayed getting on here. A little connection issue going on. All right, let me see here. So, thanks for everybody watching today. Thought we'd do a little live video here for you people that are stuck in the house. And uh, first of all, let's go to Patreon. I had a lot of questions on there to answer. 
<clears throat> how do you, uh, Lee Miller asks, how do you determine your blade for green or dry logs or the same species? I use the same blade on everything. Seven degree double hardwood miser blades. I don't care if it's green, dry, frozen, or anything like that. Use the same one. Yes. Mama is going upstairs. Okay, she's upstairs. Mama Cat is upstairs. Bruno's letting everybody know that Mama Cat has went upstairs. She may be back later. So anyways, Lee, uh, I use the same bl uh, degree blade on everything, but we don't deal with frozen logs down here. It does get cold in the wintertime like it does in other parts of the country. Therefore, seven degree works best. If you have frozen logs, use the number four degree blade for that. That's good for frozen timber. Let me go back here. I'm trying to keep up with everything. There's a lot going on down here. Uh, let me see. I will get back to you guys in the chat in just a second. There's a bunch of Patreon questions here I'm trying to answer. Uh, Blue Ox, regarding pricing, what do you refer to as a guide for your species of wood? I did a blog post on that back in January that's very helpful, Blue. I'll put a link down to that blog post on your question there. You can go read that. And that's how I determine my pricing here. And... Uh, I'll do that when I get done with this live feed today. Uh, can, can you uh, do a future video on the AccuSet 2? I read the directions of the manual, but it's still not, it's still confusing. Scott was asking that. The AccuSet 2 is pretty complicated, actually. It can be confusing. There's a guy named BB Man, and he saws down in Alabama, I think, somewhere down south, and he's retired now, but he done a great video on the AccuSet 2 on YouTube. And uh, tell you what I'll do when this video's done, Scott, I'll find that video and put a link in the comment that you put on there and you can go watch that. He does a great explanation of the AccuSet 2. When I forget something on the AccuSet 2, or I'm not sure what's going on, I go back and watch that video and it answers my question every time. It's a very good reference to have. All right, this is busy today. Let me see here. Ash County, North Carolina, that's not too far away. What do you do with the bark you cut off your logs? We burn it. Uh, Queens, New York. Uh, Michael, we're talking about the song last night. I've done that video last night of the song because I get like 20 emails a day sometimes. People go back and watch older videos and they're trying to find out where that song is. And the links to the song and the, old to and the older YouTube videos are gone now for some reason. I didn't delete them. I thought I'd just do a video just dedicated to that song and put it up so people could, I could just push people in that direction. If you like that song, here's a video, the whole entire song. And I pay for the rights to that song so I can post the whole entire song with no legal issues or nothing like that, which is good. And it probably helps that artist sell a lot of albums too. I probably gave that song more exposure than anybody else has. But it's a really good song. If it was on the radio, everybody would be listening to that song. I don't know why it didn't get popular with the major... Uh, you know, radio stations and stuff. I have no idea how that works anyways. Uh, Steve asked, are you happy with the Woodmiser Kiln? Absolutely. One of the best investments we've ever made was the Kiln. It runs perfectly every time. Uh, Frank, when you plan on starting the barn? I started the barn, Frank, last year. Does not finished it yet. I'm working on it. It's just taking some time. Uh, sycamore is very good for lumber for uh, furniture makers, but you make sure that you quarter saw it. You got a quarter saw. It has interlocking spiral grain, and if you don't quarter saw it when you dry it, it's going to be a mess for you. <clears throat> it's from West Texas, right there. Let me go back to Patreon now. Try to knock these out so I can stay on that one page. Uh, what kind of advertising do you use to sell your business? I don't do any advertising. I used to use Craigslist and stuff years ago, but word of mouth pits up and stuff like that evolves and everybody, you know, this is a small town. Everybody knows you got a sawmill and you don't really have to advertise. You know, I, I turn down more work than I do, put it that way. Uh, my buddy Joe up in Virginia asked, what is Bruno's favorite ice cream? Bruno, come here. What do you tell Joe what's your favorite flavor? Come here. Got you a question here. Bruno's getting questions now. I want you to look at the camera and tell Joe what's your favorite flavor of ice cream. Chocolate. Chocolate. There you go. A good choice. Chocolate. All right. So let me see here. I will try to get back to you guys in a second. Uh, how's Mama Cat? She's doing just fine. She's recovered very well from her little stint in the neighbor's barn for a few weeks. Uh, 
Thomas Hooker, who's getting LT15 wide in a few weeks. That's pretty exciting. He's getting his first sawmill. I think it's his first sawmill. He's asked what's the best uh, wood for pope for poles. They don't want to use pressure treated. Probably the best is white oak. You know, I would say locust, and people are probably running their keyboard right now saying it's locust. Well, it probably is locust, but good luck finding locust. It's hard for us to find it around here. You can find smaller ones, but if you saw it up, it's going to have a big crack and rot right there in the heart of it, and it's going to have radiating cracks going every direction. Our locust here is not that good, and that's black locust, not honey and yellow locust. Yellow locust will be a bad decision. Black locust is very rot resistant, very good stuff. And that would be the best choice if you can find it. Over in North Carolina in the mountains, I think they have a good source for that. Around here, not so much. But I would tell you to probably get white oak. White oak's pretty uh, easy to find in most parts of the world. White oak will last a lot longer in the ground than anything else will for them to put it in the ground. But I would suggest if you can, pour a concrete pier and put it on top of that and keep it out of the ground if possible and put some roofing paper between the concrete and your post to keep moisture from wicking up through the post. Keep that moisture out of there if you can. Okay, uh, let me see here. I got one more to refresh on. I'm trying to get back to you other guys here. I'll get back to your questions here on YouTube in just one second. My wife is kind of jumping in there as well. She'll be able to answer some of them also, hopefully. I don't know if James is on here today either. Let me see here. Uh, okay. Uh, Why is stomach? What? I have a stomach. Yeah, you have a stomach. You sure do. Okay, that's about all on Patreon. It looks like I can <clears throat> close that out. All right, let's get to the questions here. Okay, there's Carolyn over in England. She's painting out with us today. Uh, there's Mike asking about a walnut. I have a walnut. I'm not sure if that's the one you're talking about. There's a very large one across town that a lady gave me, and... Uh, I'm hoping to get up there sometime this year and get it. Hopefully if these little, uh, the situations clear up, we can travel a lot more. I can get up there and get that pretty soon. Uh, talking about mulberry, you'll love the color. Yeah, I've never dealt with mulberry. That's my guy who brings me the apple logs. He brought that over. So I'm looking forward to get that on the meal. That'll be the first time I've ever saw it in any mulberry at all. Berries out of here. Let me see here. Try to keep up with everybody and go back. Okay, let me go back up here, see if I can scan through here and grab some questions, if I can. Uh, hello from the glass plant, saw that. I may have missed a few, look over me if I did, there's a lot of chats and I'm trying to keep up with them. Uh, Denver asked, is 250 too much to charge to cut a 24 inch by 13 inch walnut into two inch slabs on site? I don't know, Denver. Uh, you can figure out how many board feet that is. Most people here charge by the board foot. The average rate here for custom sawing is 30 cents by the board foot. That's what most guys charge that do custom sawing here. And they also charge setup fees now, which I don't do portable sawmill. And I'm, I got out of that business a long time ago, but Figure up the board feet and find out what other people in your area are charging and kind of do the math and go from there is about the best advice on that. Okay, uh, there's uh, PD, grew up in uh, North Georgia, grew up in Elizabeth, and that's just up the road from here, not too far away at all. Uh, Ken, I no, no idea mulberry grew that big. I didn't, I've seen some decent mulberries around here, about 12, 14 inches. That one right there, I didn't measure, but I'm thinking it's about 20 plus inches. And the crotch log is probably going to be wider than my sawmill can handle, so we'll probably trim that down a little. So it's a good size mulberry. <clears throat> There's Rob talking about that video the other day from the walnut. And uh, what are your thoughts on vacuum kilns? I have no opinion. I have never dealt with one. I'm not going to give you guys opinions 
unless I have firsthand knowledge. And I have no firsthand knowledge with the vacuum kilns. So uh, if, you're, if you're considered buying one, go over to theforesterform.com, get on the kiln drying forum, and there's tons of guys on there that run those vacuum kilns. And you can hit those guys up and they'll gladly share some knowledge with you and opinions on how they operate. I just have no idea about them. I've never dealt with them. The Nile Woodmiser Dehumidification Kilns is the only thing I have familiar, uh, familiarity with. That's all we've ever had here at the sawmill. But uh, head on the forestry forum. Those guys will help you out. Tons of knowledge over there. Just tons of free knowledge. You could probably do a search in the search bar and find your answer that way as well. Uh, James, the barn's going good. I have one more tie beam to cut joinery on, and then we're going to stand up half the barn. So it's going really well. It's just been so wet. It's raining today. It rained all day yesterday. It's supposed to rain next week. And the tie beams I'm doing outside because I can't get them in the shop because I'm overcrowded in there. So I can't really do the joinery work unless it stops raining because, you know, I've got chain mortars here. I've got power tools out there and it just, you know, makes for a hindrance with all this rain. <clears throat> Let's see here. Going up a mulberry tree was three foot wide. That's pretty big. Uh, Mike asks, will we be selling slabs in Fetty's new shop? We will. As uh, soon as Fetty gets that underway, I think he's supposed to close the end of the month on that building. And uh, that's a, he runs a YouTube channel called Got It Made. A lot of you guys are familiar with him. He's across town from me. But as soon as that shop opens up, I will probably start selling some of our slabs up there in his showroom. So that will happen. Looks like you were going to butter your hips to move around the sawmill side. Yeah, it's getting tight in there. I got some ideas on how to reduce that. And we're going to be reducing that in the next few weeks and build some small drying sheds around the sawmill building. So that's going to be taken care of shortly. Uh, Phil's Dream Pit. Yes, actually my, uh, my sister-in-law, I think she's the manager there, but Phil's Dream Pit. I'm not eight there in a long time, though. I need to go up there and get something one day. We love barbecue, but... Very good food up there if you can get in. You go at lunchtime, you can't even get in anymore. Very crowded place. More videos after you cut, show things with the slabs. Well, Dave, the problem is most of my uh, <clears throat> higher grade slabs are sold about an hour and a half away at a woodworking store. And I have no idea who buys them, you know, they, and they probably have no idea where the wood's coming from. It's just a large woodworking store. That's where I sell a lot of my slabs at. So it's kind of hard for me to trace and find out what happens to them because, you know, they just sell them as wholesale. Or I'll sell them at wholesale. They sell them at uh, commercial rates and uh, they go all over the world. They ship them everywhere. So I really can't track it. It's hard to find out what happens to them. Unless I sell one locally, which I don't do a lot of local sales due to this being a small town. The interest just ain't there. James T. JJ. You know, James... That's my buddy JJ down North Carolina. Met him years ago at a totally different topic right there, but he's commented on here forever as James Teague, and I, and I always known him for JJ, and I never knew it was JJ talk, the comment. That's pretty funny. Hope you're doing good down there, buddy. He runs a, a LT-15 down on his farm. A lot of slabs go to the guitar industry. They may, there's a lot of amateur woodworkers in that large city that we sell the slabs at. And I bet a lot of them probably are made into guitars. But I bet most of them are probably live edge tables because that's still the current trend. And it's still, you know, not dying down by no means at all. Oh, James, that's funny. I've seen him comment for years on here. Didn't know that was JJ down there. I didn't know, yeah, didn't know his last name. Well, Everybody stop what they're doing. My brother has commented on my YouTube channel here. Everybody stop. Look at that comment. Wayne Elliott right there. He's, you know, that's my brother. He's older than me. He's never commented on my videos ever. That's the first time he's ever made a comment. You can tell my brother is probably sitting at home bored if he's commenting on my videos. He never does it. <laughs> that's kind of funny there. Okay, do you have a chance to research the American chestnut? I have not. Uh, we start putting the barn together very soon. Hi from England. Do, do you ever uh, do you ever get a reaction from the walnut sawdust? It doesn't bother me, but we burn it. It all goes to the burn pile. All the walnut sawdust does. James, I completely understand. That's a given. There's my brother. That's a given. 
It's an old saying that we have between each other. <clears throat> we see here. What about uh, what about a buckeye tree? I looked at a buckeye tree, Chris, two weeks ago, at a former coworker of mine. Her dad had a bunch of trees fall down, and we're gonna go get that tree as soon as things clear up here. They're an older couple. I want to kind of keep some distance from them, but they got a large buckeye down there in their backyard that fell. It's funny you should even mention buckeye. And we're gonna be getting down there as soon as we can to get it. All right. Sawdust is man glitter. Yeah, the t-shirts, the I have lots of ideas. They're just, uh, they're, they're really aggravating because I have to do a pre-order. We get them in here, then we have to package them all up. It's a lot of time in those t-shirts. It's a lot of time. How much do you think a sunken pine would be worth? I have no idea. I've never dealt with it. I wouldn't be much help to you right there. <clears throat> There's my buddy John in Iowa. Comment in there. All right, so let me check the uh, Patreon has been caught up there. Everybody's answering their questions on Patreon. Those are all answered. There's no super chats today, so no super chats to answer either. If you're wondering what that is, that's that little dollar sign you see. You can put a little, like a little tip jar in for us. And it kind of highlights your comment and you can do stuff like that. And we really appreciate that for people that do that. Uh, what's the name of the closing song in the Sassafras episode? I have no idea, Jim. I've made almost 500 videos on here and you have to apologize. I cannot remember. I, I'm not sure. But there's an app you can get for your phone. I tell people all the time it identifies music and it's free. You can play that while songs or any kind of music's playing. And it will tell you what the artist is. It's very helpful. I use it a lot on stuff where I can identify things. Okay, uh, there's Tom. He's out of here. It's about 1230. I was late getting on here. We'll try to do about an hour if we can. Uh, hardwood sawdust for making smoke wood pellets. Uh, David Stein over in Illinois, he's a pretty famous woodworker. He's got a machine where he takes his wood uh, sawdust and compresses it down into these little cylindrical, you know, little pellets kind of, but they're good size. And he burns it in his outside uh, wood boiler. So there's our machines that will do that. And I've seen people make them. He has like a commercial machine that does it. Using hardwood sawdust, let me see here. Uh, there's the first uh, super chat. Appreciate it, Jeff. We really appreciate that. That helps us out here on these live videos as it takes a lot of time to do these. So appreciate that, Jeff. Okay, uh, I'm out. Tree service dropped a duck truckload of oak and American elm. There's JT's out of here. He's got some elm. Be 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 uh be careful on the elm, and I would quarter saw it if you can. That elm has a spiral interlocking grain. It's a mess. You may want to quarter saw that. All right. Hello from the Netherlands. Let me see here. Catch up here. JT is out of here. Talk to you later. Be careful down there, JT. Let me see. Uh, I use a, on the editing software, we use a thing called Filmora. F-I-L-M-O-R-A. It works pretty good. It's really easy to use. I like it. It's like a $80 a year for the license or something like that. It works really good. You see, you want to shave your beard for 100,000 subs? Not a chance. Not a chance that's going to happen. Uh, have you worked with tulip poplar? Yes, I love sawmill and poplar. It cuts like butter. It tries to move a lot, though. The juvenile wood will, will try to bounce with you. You got to be careful when you saw it and try to get the stress out of it. And it's not really rot resistant either. It's kind of hard to fool with. But woodworkers love it for secondary species for drawers. And there's a few, I've seen a few YouTube channels have been using it for timber framing. As long as you keep it up off the ground and out of the weather, it probably would be okay, but it does check very badly. So if you're going to use it for something like that for a post, make sure you cut a saw kerf with the grain down to the heart on one face. That way if the wood, try, that way if the wood splits, it's going to split right there at your saw kerf. And you'll have one kerf on the outside and the rest of the timber will be stable. So it's like an old Japanese method, I think, for keeping it stable. 
Okay, you worked with Tula Poplar. I first saw your shirt, I thought you had been sick on yourself. No, this is, I wear a tie-dye, yeah, I've got a few tie-dyed shirts. Like I said earlier in the video, my buddy John down in Nashville, he actually uh, gives us a lot of music here for the channel. He made me this shirt about, gosh, three or four years ago probably. He makes these tie-dye shirts. You keep me, okay, the live, the live oak question, have you saw it in you? I didn't see that. Uh, no, never saw it any live oak. My buddy Matt saw it some a while back. He told me about down in uh, Hawkins County, but I've never fooled with it any. Not fooled with any live oak. I'm sure, just apologize there on your questions if I'm missing any. I'm just trying to keep up here. Uh, do you saw much curly maple? My timber source, which is my super secret source I got, I don't tell people about because it's really hard to find a good source of timber. They have some curly maple and I'm trying to get some of that. And if I can get my trailer unloaded, and if it stops raining next week, I'm gonna go grab one of those. So hopefully I'll get some pretty soon. We'll see what happens with that. Upper, uh, there's my buddy uh, on the Axe Junkies there. Upper, upper Perlins on the barns because they're light. That's very good. He's, he's right about that rooster. Great source of knowledge right there for timber framing. I've, I've reached out to him several times, especially with axes. He's very good at that stuff. But uh, he's got a really good point there with poplar for using it for the purlins on the barns because it's lighter, easier to lift, and it takes a spike well. That's very good advice. Very good advice right there. Okay, uh, Denver. Matt Cremona loves live oak. He doesn't grow in Minnesota. Yeah, I don't, I'm not... I don't keep up with a lot of stuff that Matt does there. He does a lot of sawing up there, though. I didn't know he had any live oak going on. Uh, good job on sawing the four four bys out of the pine tree. Appreciate that. A lot of people thought I should have cut that in half to reduce waste. Well, I need 11-foot four by fours, and that was the log that I had. That's why I went ahead and done that. And it was a yard tree. It came from a tree service, and it was free. So didn't have much into it except for time and a saw blade. Uh, no, no, and we don't import any exotic hardwoods here at all. I, I think we have the best timber in the world around here. I wouldn't dream of bringing in stuff from other countries. I think their stuff is just fine. I, but a lot of people liked it though, but I just like the stuff we have. Okay, uh, thanks for the music yesterday. I'm trying to scroll through here. There is an instrumental version of that song, and you have to have the rights to that video to get that instrumental version. So uh, I'm not sure how you'd pull that off without having to pay them some money like I did. Uh, Debbie Johnson's, I'm new here and you're in Tennessee. We are in Northeast Tennessee, an hour from North Carolina and about 10 minutes from Virginia. Okay, uh, let me see here. Hello from Germany, what's going on over there? What are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Just checking on Bruno there if y'all wondering who I'm talking to. He's in here with us today hanging out. All right. So, a decent little response today. 187 people watching. I thought more people may watch since it's a Saturday. Uh, what's anybody, what's, John asked a very good question here. What's anybody doing with all the dead ash trees? Well, I have a thousand board feet of ash right out here in front of the shop that a guy brought me. I need to saw those up. So people are harvesting those and sawing them up as quick as they're dying, but they're dying faster and they're falling over than people can get to them. There's going to be a lot of them in the, in the forest rotting for the next few years because people can't get to them fast enough. And on top of that, the market for them isn't that great. They don't bring a lot of money. A lot of them going to uh, tie logs and pulp wood now because they're just, you know, they're just getting too ate up with those bugs. Let me see here. Uh, what would you say is the rarest hardwood in Northeast Tennessee? God, that's a good question. The rarest hardwood we have here. I'll think on that for a minute. I'm not sure. Let me see. Are you limited to moving them around? I think so. I don't think you can move those ash trees around a whole lot based on spreading that disease. Well, appreciate that rooster. There's my buddy rooster throwing, throwing some money in the tip jar. Persimmon, that's pretty good. That's, that's, that's a pretty good right there as far as a rare tree in this area. I'll get to that in just one second. Uh, is that close to Bristol? Yeah, we're, pre we're pretty close to Bristol. 
Uh, have you seen Smoky Mountain Outpost YouTube videos? I've been watching him lately. I just found him a few weeks ago. And uh, he's probably an hour or so away from here. He's, he's got a pretty good build going down there. I don't see any braces in his build. I need to ask him why there's no braces. Looks like he's just using post connections and no, and no braces for support. But he may have a different method going on. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, so let me catch up here. My buddy, my buddy Rooster there gave us a $20 super chat. Really appreciate that. If you're on Facebook, check out Axe Junkie. He's a really good resource there for axes. Let me see what else is here. Uh, going back to that question on rare hardwoods, somebody said persimmon. Let me see. Probably either persimmon or Osage orange. You know, it's, it's hard to find Osage around here. I've only seen it a few times on creek beds. But persimmon is here. It's in a lot of people's front yards. My old neighbor where we used to live had two in his front yard, actually. Uh, let me see here. Um, so uh, probably persimmon and Osage both. Maybe more sore Osage, because I don't see that anywhere around here. There's David from Somerset. Uh, Martin, do you sell more wood because you have a YouTube channel? Probably. Probably, I'd say my, I'd say I do get more sales since we are on YouTube now. And I just hit the thumbs down button on my own video because I was trying to press a uh, comment there. Let me get that back. Let me get that back off there. Oh, I lost it there. I tell you, this keyboard here is sensitive today. Bruno, you want to get in here and talk to somebody? Bruno's kind of easing into the video here. Come here. Bend down. Want to ask you, you want to say hello to everybody? Hello. There's another appearance by the star. Bruno was actually the uh, foreman here at the sawmill. Everybody answers to him. He makes all the important decisions around here. All right, there's my, there's my brother again. Three comments. This is amazing. My brother is watching my YouTube video. Three comments. He, he must be really bored. That's all I got to say about that. I appreciate that, Cliff. I'm getting up to that comment also. That's good to know, buddy. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Bruno, everybody's talking about you there, bud. He ran off to the kitchen. He looks just like you minus the beard. <laughs> okay. Appreciate that, Frank. Uh, let me see. I saw something about magnolia. Do you cut magnolia trees? I just got in seven magnolia logs from downtown Knoxville, close to the University of Tennessee, from a very uh, historically famous mansion. I showed that on a video a few videos back unloading those. And that's going to be a really good video series, sawing those up. And I actually have one in front of the mill. It's three logs back. So we'll get to that magnolia very soon. Well, there's James. James gave you a little tip there, Bruno. All right, so my buddy James is here today. Good to see him on there. He's one of our moderators here on the channel to help us keep out a lot of this junk. There's Bart, man. Got laid off in December and faint your channel. You know, that's what we find most. Most of the people just like seeing the wood getting sawed up. And uh, that's just fine with me. You know, a lot of people really watch the sawmill running. Not a lot of people out there are running sawmills. All right, Denver's out of here. Appreciate you watching there, buddy. There's James C. Hey, Nathan from Stone Drive. <laughs> Wonder where he's at on Stone Drive. That's an interesting comment there. Stone Drive is one of the major little uh, roadways here in our town. All right, so if you're just logging on, we're trying to do about an hour on here. And uh, to recap what's been going on, I answered a bunch of Patreon questions to begin with. We got several super chats today from Craig and James and a few other people. Really appreciate that. That helps us out here. And the biggest question we get here on the channel is uh, Fairview. Okay. I know where that is, buddy. That's over at Walgreens. I know exactly where that is. And the biggest question here on the channel is, how's Mama Cat? She's doing just fine. She's in here in the house somewhere. She's wandering back and forth. I'm not sure where she's at right now. All right. So... up here again. It's got a new mouse for this computer. It's hard to keep up with it. All right, now. Let's 
see here. Hi from UK. There's uh, it's Harry doing good. Worst uh, job cutting log you regretted getting into. Gosh. Hmm. I done a mobile job, and I'm not going to give you the details of it, but I done a mobile job like back in 2011, and it turned to find out the logs that I sawed up for the customer weren't even his. He got them, you know, he didn't steal them, but he wasn't supposed to have them. It's kind of a weird situation there, and uh, that caused kind of a headache for about a few weeks right there having to deal with that. That's probably the worst job I ever done. It turned out okay in the end. I don't think he lost his job or anything like that, but I had to go give a statement and try to talk to the people and tell them what was going on. It was just a real pain right there. I was still waiting on that walnut log. Actually, I got a, a text message last night from a guy, another guy that I know with an even, with an even bigger walnut log. And I'm going to call him this afternoon. We might try to work something out on that. It's about 48 inch diameter walnut log. Huge walnut log. Let me see here. Are you muted? I hope not. Emma, are you guys hearing me? Let me see here. Okay, good deal. You may have mute pressed on your phone there, pal. Uh, the neighbor's tree. Yes, yes, that's one right there. All right, let me see here. Have you ever milled a palm tree? I have not, but I'd like to. I'd like to have one saw one day. I don't think they grow anywhere close to this place though, but that'd be interesting to see. I'm all about sawing up stuff I've never sawed into before. It's always interesting, you know. John, interesting question here. With so much disruption in shipping containers going to China, do you suppose there'll be fewer logs export to China? That there could there could be. Uh, I I have two close friends that work in the major log buying industry, and they ship out tons of timber and containers to Ohio, and a lot to China. And that's going to be interesting to see in the next few weeks if if uh, less timber is shipped to China. I wish it would all stay here. You know, I, I hate the fact that we're shipping out our walnut trees and nice hardwoods to China. Then they make stuff and ship it right back to us and we buy it. You know, in, in my opinion, you have to just keep it here and make stuff here and sell it. Uh, my dad's from Windrock. Make it down to we come by and pick up some shirts. I don't have any shirts right now, bud. Uh, we've not made any shirts in a long time here. We'll, we'll try to do some at some point this year, but I've not done none in a while because it's so much, it's a lot of work. It takes two or three days of eight hour lab, uh, manpower just to get those shirts ordered, calculated, bring them in here and package them up one by one. Takes a while. Uh, will palm trees be similar to bamboo? I have no idea. That's a good question. I'm not sure about that. see here I've seen that same video you're talking about the huge walnut tree on a Japanese sawmill I've seen that also uh, what do you think of Japanese crafts men the videos that I see those Japanese crafts guys are top-notch they are very good but they all worked with a very soft wood over there it's some kind of pine or cedar girls mama cat and it's really really forgiving on hand tools I think that's you know if you shipped over some Hardwoods like we have here, they'd probably have a lot harder time with it. They'd probably be wishing they had some power tools. And my wife's right about that. We always mess up on the t-shirt order. So anymore, I try to buy 20 extra after we do those. There's James, my buddy up in Ohio. There's a place called Yoder Lumber up there. He talks about it all the time. And gosh, he says they saw up 12.4 million board feet a year. That's impressive right there. That's a lot of board feet right there. And that's where a lot of our timber here goes. These Appalachian Mountains that we live in, it gets shipped up to Ohio. But at least it's being made into stuff up there and staying here. That's, you know, that's good to know right there. That's why you got such a nice walnut up there, James. It comes from my backyard, buddy. What's the hardest wood I've ever worked with? Uh, as far as a sawmill goes, hickory. Pretty hard on the sawmill. All right. Uh, 
There's David. Uh, how about a video on adjusting for a new blade and setting up a new blade? Okay, we'll do it next time. I'll show you guys how the blade goes on the tensioning process. Uh, Mike, Yoder Lumber has a website. He sent me the link before, so if you Google that, if he don't respond, if you Google up Yoder Lumber in Ohio, you will get their location, I'm sure. Are there rules about harvesting walnut? More than enough walnut trees? Nothing I'm, from, nothing I'm aware of. I don't think there's any restrictions in my area on what trees you can harvest. None are endangered, if that's what you're meaning right there. There's Dan up in Maine. The snow still lays thick on the fields. I bet it does. It's 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 60 and 70 degrees down here right now. And raining every day. There's my buddy Steve. All right. Uh, the blade stretched, you can't tension them? No, you can always put enough tension on those blades to get them where you want to be. I've never had that issue right there. They will break before you can uh, run into that problem. There's my buddy Rooster. He's getting out of here. Appreciate it, man, for watching today. Dinner is ready till next time. Well, that's that's a good reason for going right there because I'll probably end this about one o'clock because it's time for Bruno to have lunch. He's getting a little hungry in there. All right, so let me see here. I think we're caught up. One person had to hit the thumbs down. It never fails right there. Somebody had to hit the downs button. Let me see here. Going down to seven here tonight, but soon it'll warm up. Uh, or, or tornado damaged trees worth the trouble cutting into boards. Yes, yes. If you can get a hold of them. If I was closer to Nashville, I would be getting all the trees I could right now. I bet those Woodmiser guys in Nashville have plenty of the saw right now. Appreciate that, Jackson. Robert asked about butternut. It's about four logs back in front of the sawmill. We have three nice butternuts to saw up. Those logs will be awesome. Curtis Buchanan was here the other day, and he spent a lot of time looking at those butternuts. He'll probably try to get them off of me once I saw them. But uh, he, he commented saying those are going to be really special. He, think they might, he thinks they might be a little curly on the outsides as well. We'll see what happens. Uh, I thought about doing a live show with the meal. Uh, you need to get Bruno a puppy dog. Bruno has two pit bulls. He's in good shape. He's got two. Uh, he's got two dogs. Actually, they're good sized dogs. I don't show them on the channel much, but uh, yeah, we have uh, Bruno has two dogs and two cats. The dogs stay outside during the day, and then they come in the house and sleep at night. Uh, Charky and Cosmo. Cosmo really likes Charky. Uh, Cosmo likes Bruno probably more than Charky. Uh, yes, David, I'll be showing the barn raising going on. And uh, no, I don't trash the blade. I can usually reset it and regrind it. And it's usually okay after that if you hit metal. A uh, live show at the mill. On Instagram, if you follow me over there, every once in a while I'll do a live video on Instagram. Because I get a good connection up there with Instagram, but for YouTube, it's not as well. We're going to try to put a... Uh, I don't, even, I don't know things. I'm not even sure what those things are called. It's like a little satellite that pushes out towards your Wi-Fi. Did you bear connection? We're thinking about doing that in the future. No, they're not camera shy, but they don't. They can't be still for very long. Is the problem? Uh, how much walnut is grown for the nuts versus the lumber? I have no idea. No idea. Uh, do you sharpen your old blades? I sure do. I have a Woodmiser uh, CBN sharpener here at the sawmill. Me too there, uh, MRI. Hopefully next week I can get the other tie beam done and finish up that last post and we'll get that barn halfway raised. I'm probably going to throw a tarp over it just to keep the rain off of it once I get it up right there before we put the, 
the trusses on. I'm doing conventional trusses, by the way, not timber frame trusses. I'm gonna to try to speed this up a little and just do conventional uh, store-bought trusses instead of timber frame ones so I can get the roof on that thing before I'm 80. Okay, uh, repeater, yes, repeater. I didn't think of that word, repeater. Let me see, Steve Craig, why does your diesel engine torque on the top of the saw? Steve, are you talking about why does it shift on its side? I'm assuming that's what you're referring to. If so, it does that to engage the clutch and also accelerates the RPMs and gets the saw blade turning. And that's the design of Woodmizer, and they've been doing it that way on the diesel engines for a long time. And I don't think they've had any trouble with it at all. Uh, how's the pandem for you guys? I've not heard nothing around here. The adjoining county, they said they have like one or two people who have that virus up there, but Southern County, I think maybe one person has had it, but. It's not too bad around here not yet. Hopefully it won't get bad, but you never know. Now there's James, have a great day. Appreciate that, John. There's another super chat coming through. John is actually on Patreon also, so he's a double supporter. Thanks, John, I appreciate that, buddy. I've not seen those videos on the, uh, the Samson Boat Company. I'll have to check that out. Let me see here, schools are closed. They're closed here as well. Uh, the Yanmar diesel, I did an oil change after the first 50 hours, and I'll probably continue doing those every 50 hours just because a filter's six or seven dollars, and you know, oil's cheap around here, so why not keep fresh oil running if you can? And another reason I want to be very, very, you know, very delicate on that engine because it idles for more than it runs. Because I'm always in there moving these cameras around and stuff like that. So I'll probably do more maintenance on my engine than most people do uh, based on the way it's run. It's not run eight hours a day at a constant RPM. It idles for a lot of times between camera positionings. You know, just so much in doing these videos, so much time. Uh, how long does it take to sharpen a blade? I'm not sure. My sharpener is automatic. I put the lid down and go do something else, you know, a couple of minutes usually. Depends on how fast you want to run the motor. I'll try to sharpen some blades here pretty soon and show you guys that machine working as well. All right, so let me see here. Uh, how much productivity do you lose? Tons. Yes, Bruno. Oh, he's playing a little video there for us. I, I lose tons of productivity if the video camera's on. It's not even, you can't even time yourself and, you know, your board footage by the hour and be useless. I would get a lot more done if the video camera wasn't running, put it that way. All right. Uh, they want their shirt back. There's another super chat from Mike. I appreciate that a lot. That's that's awesome, Mike. Thank you very much, buddy. Really appreciate that. Well, there's Robert. It's about time you got in here, buddy. I was wondering if he's going to get on here today. Yeah, John, I'm going to be doing some small little drying sheds very soon because I need more space up there. I'm tired of having the wood all around the sawmill. I can't move. I'm trapped. I'm trapped in there. I can't move anywhere. I need to get that wood out of there drying in another location because it's just, you know, it's not feasible. It's not very productive either when you get the wood out of there. Uh, don't have any live ash trees. No, they're all dead here that we have to saw. They've all been killed by the, the ash borer. All right. So... I had a comment about my shirt somewhere in here. The 70s call, they want their shirt back. Uh, that's a good one, Dan. That's a good one. All right, so. All right, we're gonna end it right there. It's one o'clock and uh, 
I'll try to do these more often now that more people are at home right now on this quarantine stuff going on. So, uh, can I tell you guys what's happening when the sawmill's not running? So, uh, dropping business with all the shutdown. Yeah, we, we've talked about that and we do expect a uh, drop in business due to all this stuff going on. I'd say a lot of small businesses will be losing some money in the next few weeks or months because of it. Well, there's Harry. You know, buddy, I'm glad you just told me that because I had no idea you changed your stream name on here. Harry's been with us on YouTube for a long time and over on Patreon. And... Uh, some people change their screen names on here sometimes. I forget who you are. It's not that I don't recognize you. I just can't remember the screen name. It's hard to keep up with everybody. So appreciate it, Harry. Appreciate that a lot, buddy. All right. So, looks like some people are now tuning into the news to see what the daily updates are. And I'm probably going to do the same thing. And me and Bruno will probably have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's what's on menu for today. All right. All right, James, thanks for moderating. My wife, Linda, thanks for moderating. You guys make this a whole lot easier on me. And uh, thanks for Bruno for approving this broadcast today. Like I said, he's the boss here at the mill, and he approved this happening. I have to run everything through him. There's my buddy, Chris. Get off YouTube, Chris, and go get to your sawmill. You saw on Saturdays, Chris. So put the computer down and get on that LT15, buddy, because if I can't sawmill, you need to be doing it so I can watch what you're doing there. All right, guys, I'm going to close out right there. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we will see you on the next one. And uh, have a good day.